Starting your Locker Natural hair journey is oh so rewarding, but can be extremely stressful when you start to consider what products to use. If that's you, then look no further. Locklicious is a Black-owned company that has created an all-natural product line for locked and loose natural crowns. The Locklicious team works hard to ensure that their products are free of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, PEG, synthetics, and other toxic chemicals you find in other products. Best of all, the products are lightweight and will not leave residue or cause buildup. Go to Locklicious.com to start treating your crown like royalty. Hello fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I'm Wigil Zalalem, bringing you this report. Today's report is about a Ghanaian lawmaker being scolded by a CNN journalist. And it's not even based on facts. Africans are angry on social media and they've been tweeting, commenting, and speaking up against CNN trying to misrepresent or mislead their viewers when it comes to Ghana's new law on LGBTQ. Let me show you a snippet of the interview. We'll come back and discuss. So you want so to make it difficult for, for anybody to live an open, free life because of who they love in Ghana and you want them to go to jail for 10 years. You're happy with that? Well, you haven't read my bill. It's a misinformation to say that anybody who's found guilty of a homosexual act to go to jail for 10 years. That's a misconception you're peddling, and you should not do they, that. They can go platform. to jail up to 10 years. This is just one of that the many penalties that is in the bill, sir, that you're encouraging Ghanaians to report anybody who is suspected of being LGBTQ. Is that correct? Larry, I would advise that you, you and put a job at what you're doing, okay? If you want to put a spin, put a spin on a bill, right? This is my bill that I passed before Parliament. I'm going to read to you section 6.3 of the bill, or clause 6.3 of the bill, or 6.2 of the bill. A person who commits an offence under paragraphs A, B, C, D, E, F, G of subsection 1, which is the section that lists all the offences, commits a second-degree felony and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of not less than 750 penalty units and not more than 5,000 penalty units, or to a term of imprisonment not less than three years uh, or not more than five years, or both. So when you talk about 10 years imprisonment for persons engaged in homosexual activities, you are misleading the world, and that's unfortunate. So, all right, so you, you think, okay, 10 years is, not, is too much, but five years is perfectly fine for somebody who's gay in Ghana to go to jail. Well, well that, is, that, is the, that, that is the punishment for a second-degree felony in Ghana. And are the activity you... of homosexuality is a second-degree felony. Honorable George, are you just a hateful person who does not want people who are different from you to have a life in Ghana? That is a defeatist approach to ask me a question, a defeatist line of questioning, that I'm a hateful person. If I'm a hateful person, we will not be protecting the rights of persons with LGBTQ and saying that you should not, they have a right. They have a right to a fair trial before the competent court of jurisdiction. Section 22 of our bill prohibits extrajudicial treatment. And you're not highlighting that part. That part is that I'll read the prohibition of extrajudicial treatment. A person commits a misdemeanor if that person verbally or physically abuses, assaults, or harasses a person, A, accused of an offense under this act, or suffering from any gender or sexual identity. A person yeah. who commits a misdemeanor under Section 1 is liable to a fine of not less than 500 penalty units or not more than 1,000 penalty units or a term of imprisonment not less than six months so and more than three years. So you're cherry-picking what seems so like a positive angle person, of a larger bill that would make it difficult. Right Honorable George, Honorable George, let me ask a question yes. here. You're cherry-picking a part of the bill that, a, a much wider bill that would make it difficult for people who are LGBTQ in Ghana to live. What would you do, sir, if your son or daughter was gay? Well, thankfully, I have two sons and a daughter, and none of them is gay. That's not the answer. What would you do if one of them was gay? You're asking me to go into the world of abstracts. I'm a, I'm a lawmaker. I deal with specifics. I deal with specific stuff. I don't deal in abstracts. As you saw, that was Larry interviewing Honorable Sam George. And as you saw, he did not back down. The Ghanaian lawmaker did not back down because he believed that Larry, the CNN journalist, didn't have his facts right and as you saw he corrected him he said like why why 
Why do you need to do that when we can just discuss on the actual fact and truth and that whatever they're saying, whatever narrative they're trying to portray is not the actual truth, it's not what's happening in Ghana. So that shows you how the mainstream media is. And I saw a lot of people were disappointed with Larry because, you know, Larry is Kenyan and he just got promoted and he's like the global CNN journalist now. And he has this, you know, privilege or he has this platform he can share the truth and back his African brothers and sisters, but that's not what he's doing. That's what people are, th are saying and thinking. But my thing is, Larry is just an employee. He gets a script. He gets told what to say and that's all he's gonna say. I, I can't believe people expected more from the guy. He's working for CNN one of the biggest mainstream medias that are biased, that will share whatever they feel like needs to be shared and they won't tell you the whole truth, that's CNN. And you expect Larry to, you know, tell you the truth. Larry is an employee and he has no say. So I, I think the anger is misdirected. I mean, let's talk about CNN trying to push this and trying to make people think that Ghana's MPs and lawmakers are trying to come up with this law that is going to crush people and hurt them. And the thing that is upsetting most people is the misinformation. And I'm glad um, George was there to clear things up and he did. So I think we should be proud of the Ghanaian MP that stood his ground and told the truth. That's, that's what I'm focused on. Anyways, guys, let us know down below what your thoughts are about the CNN interview that angered many Africans. I'm Ongiv Zalal and bringing you story. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.